With 111 yards on the ground and 149 through the air, the Lions often struggle to get out of the gate from the very first whistle. NFL stars and brothers Greedy and Rodarius Williams returned home to Shreveport to the exact field they played on for over a decade. After the Saints offense took a big step forward last week against the Raiders, they took an even bigger step backwards tonight against the Ravens. The men's basketball team began last Saturday with an 8-4 conference record, ranked third behind Northwestern State and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. A leadoff home run by Gavin Dugas to start the game would only spell the beginning of what would become a 14-run loss for the Southeastern Lions. Coming into this game on a three-game losing streak, the Saints needed a win in the worst way. With Brandon Ingram leaving the game in the second quarter to be evaluated with a concussion and Zion Williamson leaving the game in the fourth quarter after taking a nasty fall, the Pelicans looked for some kind of spark. And who better to provide that spark than C.J. McCollum? Having come up just one game short of the Southland Conference title a year ago, this year the Lions are sitting atop the league standings. Yes, Chase, the Lions have high expectations being the preseason favorites, but the Colonels currently have the third best record in the Southland with Southeastern being second to last. What started off as a competitive game quickly turned into a blowout as LSU would go on to score 15 runs in three innings, giving the Lions their fifth consecutive loss to the LSU Tigers. Ever since Jose Alvarado has put on a Pelicans uniform, he's brought the grit that the front office has been searching for for years. The Southeastern Lions baseball team are the defending Southland Conference Tournament champions, and the Lions have been picked to finish second in the league this year. Pierce Levengood's three-run home run in the top of the seventh inning brought the Lions within one run, but it wasn't enough as the Lions now fall five games below 500. The Saints' inability to move the ball down the field and contain Lamar Jackson now moves them to 3-6 and six on the season, their worst nine-game start since 2005. In the 50th anniversary of the inaugural meeting of the Riverbell Classic, the Southeastern Lions had a lot on the line heading into Thibodeau. Redshirt freshman Eli Sawyer had one of his best performances of the season, throwing for 228 yards and three touchdowns, two of which went to Ivan Drabaki. But it was the senior in the backfield that showed her most of the load for the Lions offense. Jesse Britt has been a vital part of the Lions offense all season, and tonight in the regular season finale, he had one agenda in mind when carrying the football. Don't go down. It's simple as that. Like, I run hard. I play every play like it's my last play. I take a deep breath before every play, reset my whole body, and it's that. I'm ready to go every single play. Jesse Britt, he's a, he's a different cat, man. He, uh, he runs hard, and we might not block a soul. And Jesse always believes he's going to go take it to the house. And that's, that's something you've got to have as a running back. He's, he's got that big playability, and tonight he showed that he's, uh, he really took over in, in certain parts of this game. Britt finished the game with 93 rushing yards on 11 attempts and a touchdown on the ground and through the air. Britt's performance combined with the Lions defense shutting out Nichols in the second half, earned head coach Frank Selfo his first Southland title and an automatic bid to the playoffs. You know, I think defensively we really played well, got some key turnovers, and, the, you know, the touchdown right before half really kind of set the stage. No, I'm just happy for our team, you know. I, I, they, do, they have done so much to get to this point, and our coaching staff, I'm telling you, i got a great coaching staff, and for those guys to be able to put us in this position all the way through the season and take advantage of the situation, uh, I'm just so happy for them. The Lions end their season on a high note, picking up their fifth straight win, becoming Southland Conference champs, bringing the Riverbell Trophy back to Hammond, and also punching their tickets to the playoffs, as this year the postseason will run through Hammond, Louisiana. Reporting for the big game, I'm Jermaine Kelly. In this highly anticipated Southland Conference battle between Southeastern and UNO, the Privateers started off hot, leading for the majority of the game, led by 6-1 guard Jordan Johnson, who shot 7 of 10 from beyond the arc and finished the game with 27 points. Southeastern was able to keep the deficit close in the first half with a standout performance from Nick Caldwell on both sides of the ball, being the game's leading scorer but also protecting the rim with three blocks on the night, with the Lions being shorthanded in the front court. Uh, our mentality is on the defensive end, you know, getting defensive stops, just playing as hard as we can on the defensive end, and then just letting the offense come, and that's how we've been able to win games is on the defensive end. Uh, Nick's such a tough kid, man. Nick's such a tough kid. He he's, he's, um, just battles every single time. I mean, we're asking him to guard guys 250, 260 pounds every single day, and you just see him never complains, just fights. At the same time, we're asking him to play them defensively, but they got to guard him in the other end. And as you see, he goes out for, for tonight and has 20. He's such an inside-outside threat, and he's sneaky athletic, and his basketball crew has just grown tremendously in the last three years. After trailing by nine at the end of the first half, Southeastern needed a spark going towards the end of the game if they wanted to come out with the win. And after a scoreless first half, Boogie Anderson took over, rattling off 17 points in 18 minutes, giving the Lions a much-needed boost to pick up the five-point victory over the Privateers. I, I'm biased, obviously, but I think Boogie Anderson's the best guard in the conference. You know, he's a two-way player. He's a, a tremendous on-ball defender. 
He's a, a, a nightmare to keep out of the paint and transition. He just finds his teammates. He rebounds. He does so many things for us. Just a big, strong, physical guard. That um, He was really good second half. Obviously had a couple fouls early on in the game, but um, he was able to play through those, play smart without fouling, and was huge down the stretch for us. The combo of Nick Caldwell and Boogie Anderson combined for 45 points to give the Lions their sixth conference win of the season. Reporting for the big game, I'm Jermaine Kelly. Baseball, you'll see a lot of different pitches. Fastballs, changeups, and sliders. But for this 6'3 right-hander, life would throw him the ultimate curveball. Caleb Manuel was born in Mamou, Louisiana, and started his collegiate career playing for LSU units for two years and would leave as a national champion. The next move to Hammond seemed like a logical progression for his newly developed skills. Yeah, funny thing with my move, actually I recruited him out of high school. Uh, loved the mentality, loved the kid. I thought he was a, a you know, obviously an ultimate competitor. Uh, the stuff was a little short you know, for us and wasn't quite ready talent-wise to be, be at this level. And so uh, we allowed him to, to go ahead and go to junior college. So it gave me the opportunity to follow him for a couple more years. Continue to just, you know, uh, reconvict myself that, hey, man, he was an ultimate competitor. When you think of uh, Caleb and you think of his energy and who he was and what he was, uh, again, just that same ultimate teammate, man. It would be one of Riser's best decisions. Manuel would go on to throw a complete game against number 28-ranked Sam Houston State. For this, Manuel earned Southland Conference Pitcher of the Week in May 2013. And when he decided to hang up the cleats, he joined Matt Riser's coaching staff as a camp coordinator and volunteer assistant coach. She made to his work to fit in there to be the best version of himself that he possibly could be and obviously the competitor he had. You want that dude around the program as much as possible. So obviously as things come to an end from a playing career standpoint, you start to kind of have those conversations. Hey, what are you looking at doing? Where are you going to, you know, what direction you want to go professionally? Coach, man, I really like to get into coaching. Uh, hey, man, I think you make a phenomenal coach. As a player, Manuel was known for his work ethic, and he brought the same energy and focus to coaching. The Southeastern players loved him, but in 2019, despite being the picture of health, he was diagnosed with cancer. One of the best I've been around and with regards to consistent energy. Um, players knew what they were getting every day. You know, uh, he was sort of the life of the party on the field, um, you know, very headsy baseball coach in terms of situationally, he was really good. Um, but I think the thing that stood out the most is his love for our players and um, the way he got the most out of them. And he will perform his coaching duties without skipping a beat, despite battling cancer. In 2019, he returned to his alma mater and was promoted to the pitching coach for the Lions. But then the pandemic struck and forced him to step down for cancer treatment. I, um, yeah, it was a tough conversation that we had to kind of meet in May and say, so Skip, if you got a moment on the backside, you know, I'd love to sit and talk. And the number one thing he had in that conversation to say was obviously grateful for the opportunity, but the number one thing he was talking about was the guys. And he knew his road going forward. Uh, that he had a battle that was not going to give the best version of himself from a coaching standpoint, and he won the best for those players. In fact, social media spread the message of Caleb Manuel's struggle, though many called him Coach Mamu, a tribute to his hometown. Manuel's bravery was known across the state, and when he lost his battle with cancer at the age of 30 on September 16, 2021, baseball fans, friends, and family grieved the loss of a wonderful player, coach, and mentor. You know, the example that he set for me to make me better, the example that I can now leave for my kids and help, you know, obviously mold them and the young men that they need to be, um, he's ideally what I want my kids to grow up to be. And be the same human being, be the same person. Um, that loyalty man, that hard work factor goes a long ways. The main takeaway is don't take anything for granted, you know. That's what he did. For sure. Reporting for the big game, I'm Jermaine Kelly.